you. Finding life rather dull. Dreaming again of exotic places. Wishing you were somewhere else. We offer you... Escape. Escape with us now to the most evil city in the Orient and the story of a beautiful but unscrupulous woman who ruled it as Herb Purdom tells it in his exciting story, Macau. The streets are dark. It's raining on my hair, my good dress. All very unimportant now. I only know it's a good night to die. Where do you begin a story like mine? I think it began when the devil gathered the filth and evil of the world. He shaped it into a city and placed it on the south coast of China. He named it Macau. And because the devil enjoys a bad joke, he made me queen of Macau's rottenness. And worse, he made me like it. Maybe you've wanted something. Wanted something so bad you'd kill to get it. I did. I wanted a city, this city. I wanted to own every grimy cafe and waterfront dive in it. I did get some of it, a lot of it. But the more I got, the more I wanted. And I nearly got it, too. Then six days ago, things began to go wrong. It was at the harbor front one afternoon. Out of my way, you scabby bums. Out of my way before I take disinfectant to you. <laughs> That's right, you stinking rabble. Make room. Make Good oh. afternoon, Mrs. Rawls. Let go of my arm, Marza. Did you want something on the docks? Your men have been operating in the city. Your province is on the water, Marzik. You're out of line. So there's plenty left for you? I see. All right, Marzik. And don't forget that on the docks, I'm king. Yeah? Well, long live the king, only don't bet on it. Goodbye, Marsick. Hey, wait. Uh, there's no reason for us to fight. I'll do Goodbye, any... Goodbye, Marsick. Yeah, of course, only if I offended you, Mrs. Rawls. I'm sorry. We could be friends. I'm on your side. You just be sure you're on my side. Well, lady, that man bothering you... What? If you're unhappy with the way that big character's heart acts, maybe I can help. His heart? Sure, sure. It just keeps beating and beating. It needs a rest. Oh? Who are you? Johnny Hook. Oh, don't bother to introduce yourself. Everyone in Macau knows Mrs. Connie Rawls. Then you should know I need no help. I have pretty good references. A fellow named Vic Rawls once wrote me I had a job here if I wanted to claim it. You... You knew my husband? Yeah. Yeah, we were bunkmates in the AVG. Did a little smuggling together once. I heard he was killed. Two years ago. Where have you been? I just finished a hitch with Lu Chan. The guerrilla leader? Yeah. The one they call the White Tiger? <laughs> well, the commies call him worse than that. Mao would hock his hammer and sickle to see old Lu Chan hanging by his heel. I know. Lu Chan's guerrilla army is still holding nearly half of southern China. That's right. Look, my headquarters, the Red Angel, is near here. We can talk there. Swell. Perhaps. If you're what you say, you may have a job. If not, well, at least you'll have a chance to taste Willie's punch of the devil. It's good. And you add a jigger on a half of cognac and a dash of bitters. Then take a lemon, twist and rub it gently. That, that, that's very important. You rub it gentle around the rim of each glass. See, most guys toss the twist into the drink, but that way, you know, it's too strong. All you want is just the stink of the lemon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. You wrap a tongue around a punch of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Willie. 
I don't know about the drink, but your monologue will do. Hey, that's all right. I told you. Well, dummy, what are you waiting for, a medal? Get out, get down to the bar. Sure, Mr. Ross, sure. You know, that's what I like, a dame with sentiment. Why didn't you just kick him in the stomach and be done with it? He's used to me. I'll bet he is. You know, you're pretty, you're smart. I can see why Vic married you. But how do you run a setup like this? Vic spoke Cantonese. He knew the people. You? It isn't necessary. All brain work, huh? Well, honey, you gotta be human, too. You gotta understand feelings. Like this one, for instance. There. Is that all? No. No, I'm liable to kiss you again. Fusang. What? Well, sliding panels. Who's the Chinese gun toter? The name is Fu Sung, foolish one. Huh? You look a little old to be playing games. Honey, aren't you being a little melodramatic over a kiss? Shut up. Oh, now, look. Shut up. You think you're tough, Johnny Hook. Too tough to obey a woman. Well, Fu Sung, teach Casanova the penalty for misjudging me. Oh, now, hold up, sister. All I did... You! Give him another one, Fu Sung. I don't want him to make a mistake about me again. As you wish. <laughs> I think he's softening, Fusong. Pull his head back. He's dripping blood on my rug. <clears throat> All right, Johnny, you're not out. Let's talk a little. What's your name? Johnny Hook. The real one. John Butterfield. We'll call you Hook. You say you knew Vic. Describe him. Tall, dark-haired. He had a scar over his right eye. How'd he talk? Drawled. He was a Texan. You wanted any place? No. Ever kill a man? Sure, in the war. Who didn't? Otherwise... A couple? Look, what's with all the talk? Why'd you quit Lu Chan? Lu Chan? You fought for the White Tiger? Sure. Sure, but my salary started coming in the form of promises. I like to get paid for my work. So... That is the economic necessity of life. But you must tell me of Lu Chan sometime. Later, I... Fusang. Johnny, you uh, wanted to know how I run this setup. Well, Fusung handles the Orientals. He speaks a dozen dialects. Go on. As a rule, I don't hire white men. I can't be trusted. Maybe I'm an exception. Maybe. We'll see. Your first job will be on a man named Peter Marsick. I want six of his boats destroyed tonight. You'll be supplied with bombs and a fast speed boat. <laughs> While I talked, I watched. I knew from watching him take Fu Sung's blows that Johnny was tough. I hoped he was tough enough, for I was lining him up for the world's most dangerous murder. It is dark, little one. We can still see Johnny's boat ahead. You take quite an interest in him. Would you like some gum? No. It is good gum, made in your country. Chewing gum quiets your nerves. There's nothing wrong with my nerves. Pull into this cove. We can watch from here. Yes. He is ready to make his run. I hope all goes well. Yeah. Shall I mount the machine gun in the rear? If he's pursued too closely, I can discourage them from here as they pass. Perhaps you'd better. But if it's the police, don't shoot. Of course. He started his run. The gun will be ready in a moment. He's at the line of boats. There they blow. An unfortunate waste of good boats, little one. I want to be sure Marsic never challenges me again. This'll stop him. Indeed it will. Those boats cost Marsic a fortune. There. The gun only needs loading. Here comes Johnny. He's got his boat wide open. Behind him it is clear. No. Little one, look. A police cruiser. Please? Stop them. But little one, you know we must not fire on Stop the police. Stop that cruiser. The men are forward. Try for the engine's aft. No, little one, this is insane. Stop that cruiser or I'll ram it. Very well. <laughs> did it. They're on fire. They're jumping. Please, little one, let us go. Yeah. (sighs) 
all for that stranger. You are a fool. Shut up, Fusang. I run this thing. You are angry, little one. We will discuss it later. Ah, no more disaster. I'm out of gum. You just started a new stick. It is unfortunate, but I swallowed it. Hi, Connie. Everything quiet? Come in, Johnny. Well, honey, my six boats are matchwood now. Mrs. Rawls. Uh, Mrs. Rawls? I got away clean, but someone did a devil of a lot of shooting behind me. You idiot, you forced us to sink a police cruiser. I forced you? You mean that it was you behind me? Fu Sung and I. You're not with Lu Chan fighting the communists now, Johnny. Fights cost me money. Oh, how? The cops. Well, they won't be able to prove anything, but that's because I dumped a machine gun worth $600. I'll steal your new one. Forget it. You did a good job on the boats. Thanks. Little one, Inspector Kaiwan, downstairs in the club. Thanks, I'll be down. Johnny, you better get out of here and stay out for a day or so. Use the back stairs. All right. Oh, and Connie, uh, Mrs. Rawls. Yeah? Thanks. For what? My life. It's not much, but I like it. You know, if I can keep you around, I may die a natural death yet. I gave Johnny three minutes, then I went down to the nightclub. The Red Angel wasn't only a good front, it was something else. Something special, just for me. It was smoky enough for a five-alarm fire, and the combined smell of liquor, perfume, and unwashed bodies was enough to make a buzzard back off. But to me, the Red Angel had never lost its fascination. I wouldn't have traded it for heaven. Mrs. Rose, Inspector Kaiwan. We've met on many occasions. Yes, indeed. The number of our meetings has not dulled my enjoyment of your beauty, madam. Uh, yeah. A drink? Thank you. No. It is my sad duty to try and discover proof of your activities last night. Yes. If you were I, would you use trickery or <laughs> threats? <laughs> Fusang has given me your alibi. Your boats, of course, have been prepared for our visit. Is that all? I would like to chat for a while. Perhaps I can trick you. You've heard your visit. Unless you bring a charge against me, get out. Cops give the place a bad smell. Is it possible? Nevertheless, a year ago, you were more cautious with me, madam. You have given me hope at last. Hope? What hope? The most powerful drug in the world is power. The addict destroys himself. And you, madam, have become an addict. Good night. Escape, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, returns in just a moment. Tomorrow evening, CBS presents over most of these same stations The Nation's Nightmare, first of six weekly programs exploring organized crime in America. First program in this series of hard-hitting exposés will be titled The Narcotic Evil. Gathered from major centers of addiction, information about government activity against this vice, words spoken by its victims, and the progress in the fight to correct it will be reported tomorrow night on The Nation's Nightmare over CBS. And now, back to Escape. I was always fascinated by the smell of evil. Even when I was a little girl, I used to pretend my dolls were... <laughs> well, no matter. Let's say I was bad to begin with. The only wages I wanted to earn were the wages of sin. Above all, I wanted to be bad in a big way. And in Macau, 6,000 miles from my hometown, I made it. That's only me, Mrs. Rawls. Willie. Well, come on in, dummy. Don't stand there. 
Yes, ma'am. Two drinks, Willie, and make them good. You oughtn't to talk like that to me, Mrs. Ross. Call me a dummy. That isn't very nice. Oh, shut up. Just mix the drinks and turn on that blasted fan before I suffocate. Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, going to leave you, Mrs. Rawls. I'm going home. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, the drinks, Willie. Dream about home tomorrow. I will. That's when I'm gone. I saved my money. Uh, uh, see? It's all in this wallet. I'm going home after ten years. Well, you really do have the money. Yes, ma'am. I'll make the drinks. Do that. Evening, Connie. Oh, hi, Willie. How's the drinking business? Oh, people still doing it. They always do it. I'm going home, Johnny. Tomorrow. <laughs> Willie. I'm home after <laughs> Willie, Johnny's not interested. Get out. Sure, Mrs. Ross. Sure. What are you trying to prove, Connie? What do you mean? Kicking that poor guy around. Does it make you feel good? He's a dummy. He doesn't care. Help yourself to the drinks and hand me one. I'll call down and make amends to Willie. Yeah, you do that. Here you are. Thanks. Fusang? Willie's on his way down. Give him the night off and tell him the drinks are on me. Yeah, champagne. And listen, he's carrying a bankroll. See that he doesn't have it in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, and that champagne. Make it the cheap kind. So Willie doesn't get home after all. He's a good bartender when he's sober. And I like these. Well, that's a good reason to bust a man's drink. Inspector Kaiwan has dropped his investigation. He knows it's you. He can't touch me. I'm too big. Yeah, yeah, you're too big. But it's nothing to what it will be. And you too, Johnny. If you can bear the way I treat my bartender. Oh, I'm a louse already. I may as well go all the way. A quarter of a million dollars? What? Help you make the trip? A quarter? Hey, how many of those drinks have you had? You want in? Do I want to breathe? It's a big order. Dangerous job. So was the war, only it didn't pay so well. Go on. Mao's communists are taking over in China. I'm going to help them for a quarter of a million dollars. And? And? Macau. Macau? You mean the whole city? The whole city. Well, well I give you credit, baby. You go nuts in a big way. Well, I've made the deal. All right, break it down for me. It's very simple. You'll assassinate the guerrilla leader, Lu Chan. Johnny's face was a color of blue cheese as he stared at me. But I knew the power of money over men like him. That quarter of a million would buy better scruples than his. And in case he needed extra encouragement, I gave him an additional promise and a kiss. We both liked it. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, Johnny, again. You love me? Yes. Yes, I do. Johnny? Hmm? You'll do the job? Sure, sure. I'll start making plans right away. Good. Keep in mind what you're working for. A quarter of a million dollars. And me. Now drink your drink, honey. The ice is melting. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten. Your play, little one. I should stop now. I never win against you, Fu Sung. Uh, four of diamonds. Mrs. Rawls, you gotta give it back to me. You, you stole my money. It ain't right. Give it back. Now, Willie, don't blame me if you got drunk and were rolled. Please, please. I, I saved for ten years to get that money. Jack of hearts to you, Fu Sung. Give it back to me or I'll, I'll, I'll kill you. See, I got a gun. Don't be a fool, Willie. She is right, Willie. Don't be a fool. There are at least 200 men who would make sure you never left Macau alive. They would get you in an alley, in the street, somewhere. You know they would. All I want is my money. Maybe I'll tell the police. Who's your next of kin, Willie? But uh, my next of kin? Your health is getting bad. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to blab the police. I... I, I was just kidding. I was sure you were. Get out of here, Willie, and leave the gun. Sure. Sure, Mrs. Ross, sure. Here. 
That dummy. Got a salary ten dollars, Busung. He saves too much. Three to you. Gin. Gin. I have the devil's own luck. <laughs> I guess I just don't live right. That's nice, Frankie. Little one. It's been a good night. The money flowed in. Good. Tell Willie to make me a drink. Go on, Frankie. Good evening, Mrs. Rawls. It is indeed a lovely melody. No, hello, Inspector. Slumming? Slumming? I do not believe I understand this word. Forget it. Play some more, Frankie. I... I brought you word that I thought might distress you. Peter Marsett committed suicide an hour ago. So? So it is considered humane to be sad when an acquaintance meets violent end. Especially when I'm supposed to have blown up his boats and driven him to it, huh? Get out of here, Brassett. As you wish. You seem to hold my work in great disfavor. Look, Inspector Carwan, I don't like cops, and I don't like you. So do me a favor and stay away from me. Good night, Mrs. Rawls. Oh, good evening, Mr. Hook, I believe. Yeah. Good evening, Inspector. Um, uh, Kaiwan, I believe. Kaiwan. Hi, Connie. That's a nice tune. What is it? Softly as a morning sunrise. My favorite. Thanks, Frankie. Come on over to the bar, Johnny. I've got a drink waiting. Here's your drink, Mrs. Rawls. Wally, fix me one, will you? I need it. Sure. Well, Johnny, figured out your plan? Yeah. Well? Oh, don't mind Willie there. Tell me. I figured out a way to kill Lu Chun, but I'm not going to do it. Say that again. You heard right, Connie. I'm out of the deal. Hey, uh, Johnny. Thanks, Willie. Oh, boy, you're still as good as ever. Thank you. Glad you like it. Johnny Hook, you're not backing out of this deal. I'm already out. Oh, look, Connie, you had me tabbed right, I guess. For that kind of money, I'd kill a man. But not if it means the end of what a lot of guys I knew died for. Died for? This will mean more power for us than we ever dreamed of. I don't dream. I have nightmares. How about you and I, Johnny? Doesn't that count at all? I told you once, Connie. Sometimes it isn't just brain work. You have to understand the way people feel. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't know what I'm talking about. Johnny! Johnny! You stupid, sentimental fool. You're forcing Another me to... Another drink, Mrs. Ross? No, I'm going upstairs. Clean up and lock up. And if you drink any of the liquor, pay for it. just finished. Would you care for some gin rummy? Johnny Hook has just betrayed us. He just left. You know what to do. Johnny? But how? Never mind how. Pass the order along. You know what you are doing. Once I give that order, he is a dead man. That's the kind of a man I want him to be. Do as I say. Yes. Good night, little one. I will tell them to make it quick. You will never know what happened. Johnny would never know, but I would. I sat at my desk staring through two blank eyes at the room. Only I was seeing Johnny walking Macau Street, past this alley and the next, always going closer to the one that held his death. I looked out at the window and saw it was beginning to rain. Go away. I give the order, Mrs. Rawls. Then go away. What did you call me? Mrs. Rawls. But I'm your little one. You always... There is no little one. You killed her when you plotted to betray my people. What? 
So Willie shot off his mouth. As you say, Willie shot off his mouth. All right, so I didn't tell you about it. I would have cut you in on it later. Even now you do not understand. You betrayed my people, the men who make up your organization, me. Louis Shun is all that stands between us and communist slavery. Get a soapbox, patriot. Everybody's waving a flag tonight. I wished only to tell you that you are through in Macau. You forgetting I own this place? This and all the other places, the cars, the boats, the guns, everything? But I control the men. So I'll get new men. Now get out. Get out. Get out, I'm sick of the sight of you. Certainly. Only, it is just fair to tell you, Mrs. Rawls, the penalty for betrayal in our organization is death, as you know. I passed the order for yours tonight. How could it happen? One moment I was all powerful and my plans were set to make me owner of Macau. And then I was alone, my power gone, and I was just another woman. No, not even that. For there outside the wet window was my death waiting for me. Somehow I found myself driven to meet it. I went down and out into the rain. Well, hello there, cutie. How's about a nice warm drinky, eh? Hey, what's the matter? Too big to drink with a sailor? Snooty dame. Which one? Which doorway will it be? Rain is so clean. The cow glistens like a polished black diamond now. I wish I'd gotten up early more often. I never realized how wonderful it is to see a sunrise. I like walking in the early morning. Perhaps if I hurry, I can catch Johnny. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Macau by Herb Purdom, starring Michael Ann Barrett and Stacey Harris with Raymond Burr. Featured in the cast were Lou Krugman, Charles Lung, Paul Dubov, and Frank Gerstel. The special music for Escape is composed by Leith Stevens and conducted tonight by Wilbur Hatch. Next week, escape with us to the outer limits of space and the terrifying experiences of five men who penetrated it. As Ray Bradbury, famous science fiction writer, tells it in his gripping story, The Earth Men. Immediately after station identification over most of these same CBS stations, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, played by Edmund O'Brien, investigates the Neil Breer matter for an insurance company. Finding his victim buried a week, Johnny Dollar goes to work uncovering one shocking fact after another. As his expense account mounts, so does the action and excitement. Stay tuned for Edmund O'Brien as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, next on most of these same CBS stations. Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS where you hear the FBI in peace and war every Thursday night on the Columbia Broadcasting System.